Psalms, Psalms chapter 97, the Alpha and Omega of Jesus Christ. The Lord reigneth. Here we go, right there. Where does he reign? Let the earth rejoice. Let the planet rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. The planet, earth. Why? The curse has been removed except for the serpent. When Jesus Christ comes back, eliminates his enemies, Settles down and brings Israel into the promised land like Joshua did. Sits down in the throne of David. The curse is removed. There is joyfulness. God is pleased with the nation of Israel. The whole world is without curse. Pre-Genesis 3. Let the multitude of isles be glad therein. Now, isles, I've heard so many different thing for Isles. I was the island. Clouds. Pay attention to clouds in the second advent. When Jesus Christ went up in Acts chapter 1, he was taken up to the cloud. In like passage shall he come back. And when Jesus Christ comes back, there's going to be the, the, the early and the latter rain since the earth has been without rain. Thanks to Moses and Elijah. Moses turned what is rain to blood, and Elijah said, No more rain. And darkness are formed about him. Coming from outer space, he's coming, look up in the sky. There is no light, artificial or natural, by the seventh year of the tribulation period. The sun is gone, the moon gives up, the stars, no artificial light. Then you see that light coming like a train. It ain't going to be the devil, it's going to be Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Too bad the world has rejected. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. What are you going to do with those people that get not least to be judged? Get away from my throne. What about the evildoers? Not with righteousness. Are we going to sin before the throne of God? Righteousness. When we get to glory forever and ever, righteousness and judgment. Are the habitation of his throne, God's throne. A fire goes before him. We gotta read Revelation 19. Because many people don't read their Bibles out there. They'll read the TV brochure, but they won't read their Bibles, though. So. <coughs> Excuse me. So when I'm quoting when I'm quoting what the Bible said, they're like, oh hey. Who is that in the Bible? Revelation 19. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him, the horse, was called Faithful, capital F, and True, capital T. And righteousness, there he is. He does judge, there it is. That's it. And make war. God said, Thou shalt not kill. Blast Jehovah Witnesses again. His eyes are as a flame of fire. There it is. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. When Jesus Christ comes back, the, the name of Jesus is going to be eliminated. Jesus said to the fact, and I'm not going to quote it, Correctly, he says, listen, I come in my own name. But he, he that cometh in his name, him that you will receive. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Uh, check out John chapter 1 and 
the epistle, First John. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, which have been corrected in modern Bibles. So if you got a modern Bible, you can't find what I'm talking about. And the armies, thou shalt not kill, which were in heaven, followed him, that's the church, upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, which is righteousness of the saints, verse 8, white and clean, finally. Finally, we're clean, we're white, we're righteous. There it is. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. With it, he should smite the nations. Goat. And he shall rule with a rod of iron. He shall tread the winepress of the fierceness and wrath. The loving God has wrath. Of the almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings. Lord of Lords. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who we're talking about in Psalm 97. A fire goes before him, his eyes, and burns up his enemy. That's what I kill. Evidently, you've gotten that out of context. His enemies round about. Second Advent, sword. He judges. You're in a goat nation? Talk about a flamethrower. His lightning enlightened the world. There's Earth chapter verse 1, world verse 4. The people are going to be amazed at his lightning. <coughs> the earth is going to be amazed at the holiness. And the curse is gone. The earth saw and trembled earthquake, worldwide earthquake. And when you read Revelation, there is coming a massive earthquake before Jesus comes. There's all kinds of earthquakes. The heavens declare his righteousness. And all the people shall see his glory and coming on the horse. With his church behind him. They don't know who it is. They don't know his name. He knows it's God. The, the Bible says they take their idols and images. And they cast it to the back. They know it's God. They just don't know who his name is. How well is the Antichrist, the devil, the Satan, the dragon, the serpent? How well is he going to work in seven years of tribulation? He's going to eliminate the name of Jesus Christ that nobody would know. You know, the, the name that Yeshua. That's not for now. I press one for English. Wait till the Hebrews come. Wait till the Hebrews, the time of Hebrews. Revelation, the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is written to Jewish people in the tribulation period. And there's a lot of context in the book of Hebrews. If you try to pass it to a Christian, ooh, you're doing damage. Matthew is a hard book. Why? Because it's Hebrew. Written to the Jewish people. As you come to the death of Christ. Acts is a hard book. Why? Because you're going from the Hebrews to the church. Hebrews is a hard book. Why? Because it's the Hebrews in the tribulation period. I know what the devil's going to do during the tribulation period. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Now be wrong for the tribulation period. Faith and work. The temple will be there. The devil always gets things back. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. And some believe, and I, I find to the belief that the entire earth in the millennium is a flat plain. That there's only one place of highness, of mountainness. And that would be Jerusalem. Where the temple in Jesus Christ will be. Those earthquakes wipe out everything. Those earthquakes are going to wipe out America. 
Wipe out the White House. Wipe out England. You're not going to find America in the millennium. The heaven, plural, there's three of them. From the, from the ground of the earth to as high as the eagle can fly. That's, that's heaven number one. From the eagle flies to, to, the, to the face of the deep. The crystal sea, that's the universe. That's the sun, the stars, Mars. That's heaven number two. And then God's abode, God's heavenly kingdom, number three. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people shall see his glory. There's a lot of righteousness coming when Jesus comes. Confounded, put to shame, perplexed, be all they that serve graven images. And the Bible says when Christ comes, they're going to toss them. They're going to get rid of them. They don't want to be caught red-handed. Tell that to your Catholic. Tell, you, tell that to your Catholic the aids of worship. That boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. And they will. Every god out there will fall down before Jesus and declare he is Lord. James says, even the devil is terrible. Zion, New Jerusalem, I mean, Jerusalem, heard and was glad. And the daughters of Judah, this is Jewish, Israel. Everything Jewish, everything Israel, Jacob's trouble is over. Rejoice because of thy judgments, O Lord. What's the judgment? He's declared their sin. He's declared their unrighteousness. He's made them holy. He's made them right. He's given them a brand new heart. And has put his spirit in his people, finally. For thou, Lord, art high above the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. Again, that position to the earth. Jerusalem. And then all the gods will fall down and worship God. Jesus. Ye that love the Lord, do you love the Lord? Oh, I love the Lord. Hate evil. Well, not say hate. What does the Bible say? If it's evil, you're to hate it. If it goes against the scriptures, you're to hate it. If it doesn't glorify God, you're to hate it. If it's fleshy, you're to hate it. You know, a lot of the churches throughout the world today, you know what they involve in? Evil. You know what a lot of the world's entertainment does throughout the world today? Evil. And you know what Christians do? They love it. If I, I can imagine what the modern Bible says about that. Just imagine. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He keeps us up. He Preserve is when you take something and you put it up. You treat it so you can keep it. You take grapes and you preserve them to, to jelly and preserve it. All natural, of course, not what the world has. Saints. Those are, those are people that are alive, not dead like the Catholic Church. I'm a saint and I'm living. I'm not dead. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. And I wonder who that is. If we're dealing with the second advent, we're coming out of the tribulation period. Gee, who could that one wicked person be? See why I've been telling you? The wicked, the wicked, the wicked. The doctrine is one specific being. I don't know if I can say person. But yeah, it deals with wicked people, but there's the context. There's the answer. Light is sown in righteousness. That's Jesus Christ. And gladness for the upright in heart. The nation of Israel wait for the Messiah. Rejoice in the Lord. 
ye righteous. You see how much righteous is showing up when Jesus comes. Anything that's unrighteous gets that blame. Gets destroyed. We're in, we're in white linen. When we come back, give thanks. Give thanks. You mean that one day a year that we gobble, 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 so we go camp out and buy junk for Black Friday? What happened to this nation at least giving one time, one day of the, of the year, giving thanks to God? What happened to that? Wickedness. How many Christians take part in that? Wickedness. How many Christians gobble, 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 gobble and don't even really have a good prayer for the Lord? Amen. Oh, they may have a pray, you know, Lord bless that standard. Lord bless our food and you know, liking the blah 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 blah. Some people in their, in their prayers is always they say the same thing over and over and over. It's rehearsal and Jesus said, You don't have to pray like that. At the remembrance, now we're to do a lot of things to remember the Lord. The Lord suffers remind us that Jesus Christ suffered and died. The Lord suffers remind us he's coming back. At the remembrance of his holiness. So one of the things going to be in the, in the millennium is we're going to keep on remembering that he came and he rescued the Jewish people. And he's given them and the earth this glorification and righteousness. And that's going to be the thing. It won't be one day Thanksgiving. It'll be all day Thanksgiving. Properly and rightfully. 